To make a working paper model car that looks like this, you're going to need to have a ruler, two sheets of A5 paper, another two sheets of A5 paper, two sheets of paper that are approximately 8 centimetres by 21 centimetres long, a hole punch, some card, a pencil, glue, some cardboard wheels, two straws and a sheet of A4 paper. In my travels up and down the country and as a teacher myself, I've seen lots of cars being made. They are fabulously constructed but they seem to lack one thing is, and that is that the wheels don't actually turn round. What I'm going to show you is a simple method that can be repeated usually in small groups, but a, a method of making a paper car using paper, glue and all of the ingredients that I've shown you so far. The top and the base of the car are made from two A5 pieces of paper, which if you know is exactly half of an A4 sheet of paper. What's going to be placed on top of them are two girders they don't necessarily have to be made from different colours, but uh, it, it does make it easier for demonstration purposes for me to show you how you're going to make the girders that actually make the sides of the car. This all came about from when I was teaching and I was given some paper. The paper was A4 size and it had perforations which were regular. And since I was teaching a reception class at that time, um, I found that if you folded it over it made girders but there was only a limited supply of that and so I found a way of making girders quite simply. You take a sheet of A5 paper and quite often they come in pads and you take a ruler and you would get the children to do this. You would take a ruler and you place the ruler on the bottom edge of the paper and all you do is you simply wrap the ruler up in the paper. You push it with your fingers and here you're using a technique uh, which is called a hard fold. You press down on the side like that so that it makes each of the edges stronger, like so. You open it out and you find that if you fold that around on itself like that, that makes a girder, quite a strong girder like that. That actually has an inherent strength. But what you need to do is, you need to place some glue. Now I tend to either use a, an applicator such as this, where you place the glue along that edge quite, quite thinly, not, you don't go mad. Move like that, take that to one side, and you place those on top of each other. Now, the inherent weakness uh, of a structure is wherever it is bonded. So that would mean that here, on this edge, that is the, the weakest part of it. You do that and you make two of those and that would be glued in place on the side there. And I would say that as a rule of thumb, since that's the weakest point where it is joined, you would glue that onto the side of the piece of paper like so. And again, you apply glue and if you can see this doesn't you don't need to wait until the girder is actually finished and hardened you can do quite a bit of this construction in one go obviously it will need to be allowed to dry again with the uh, cut edge to the inside and since you've used a sheet of A5 paper and you've placed it on top of a sheet of A5 paper they are going to match exactly okay now, push comes to shove, this does not have to be accurate. You would always strive to have the children be accurate. And you glue that on one edge, you make a second girder. This one. 
Again, you place the glue on the side, like so. And another tip that you can use is this. With the cut edge to the inside, you put it down on top of the piece of paper and you move it slightly to one side. And that ensures that there is an even thin film of glue. And for extra stability, you place the ruler inside and just run it along the length. You don't have to squash it or squeeze it. As you can see here, you place it on top. And now you've got a structure. It's not a particularly strong structure, but what you want to do is you want to place a girder in between that space. And for that, you need to have a sheet of paper. And this, again, has been originally A5 size. And you measure it because it depends on the width of your ruler as to what size this needs to be and in this case that is eight centimeters place that to one side and again you roll it up inside of the ruler and with younger children it's quite good to have the different colored pieces of paper because then you say to them you need to have the green ones at the side again making the strong and hard hold that hard fold and you wrap that up a few gaps, roll it up, pull the ruler out, make the hard folds and open them up. And again, you can make your prism like so. If you look at it, because it's not as uh, wide, you've now got quite a strong structure because it's multiple layers. And again, some glue on the side of here. Hold it over the top. Squeeze it slightly to one side. And now you've got a girder that fits in between the two green ones. And you do that again. And again, you can do this all in the same action. And if you're waiting for things to dry, if you're doing it all in one go, then it's only one period of time to allow it to dry and I would suggest perhaps uh, overnight or at least two hours and that would be the final part again with the, the cut edge to the base just to strengthen it like so pointing towards the inside and now you've got structure now I use these uh, as picture frames and all kinds of different things but you need to place the other sheet of A4 paper on top of that. And this is where the applicator is good. Or if you have a piece of used card, you can put uh, some glue in a, a dish and you can wipe it across and it makes an even film. But here I'm just going to use the applicator all around the outside. Like so. on the inner edges as well and then just a zigzag in between and then you take the sheet of A4 paper and sometimes you need to squash the paper together and if there's a little bit of tension inside well that adds to the strength of the object now as such that is a much stronger structure like that than you could possibly make with say just two sheets or four sheets of A4 paper and some others. Now if you allow that to dry overnight in, in, as in this case it has become quite a strong structure. It doesn't have any of that kind of fluidity and obviously the, the water within the, the glue it will wrinkle the paper but that doesn't make any difference. That is now a strong structure and you can use that if you get the children to make many of these they can take the ones that they've made and they can use them and they can start to use them almost as self-constructed Lego. They can make them into objects and uh, different kinds of um, structures. Uh, one boy that I knew took these and made them into a stable. In the back of writing pads such as this or where it's in this case it's uh, art paper you'll find that there is a piece of card now this piece of card at the back is to keep all of the paper clean and rigid but it's exactly the right sort of thickness to use to make 
a hub to carry the axle. What you need to do is you need to take all of the paper that you will be using in the construction of these cars and you now have a piece of card that you can use. In general, I can't give precise measurements, in general this hub that you're making should be at least twice the depth of the, of the box that you're using or in the case of paper girders twice the depth. So what you need to do is you need to take this card and turn it into hubs on the side of the car. To do that you need to use a paper cutter and it's necessary to uh, measure the width of this piece of card and in this case it's 140 millimeters so you can take that and place it inside of here place it on the mark that is seven centimeters and you cut it just to make sure that's it so you've got two pieces of card which are exactly the same width and now I would say that to cut that you need to think about how wide that will be. Well usually the width of a, a ruler is, is pretty good, either a steel rule or in the case of plastic rules. So you need to measure that off. And what you're actually doing when you're measuring this off, you're using some quite precise measurements, the exact width of the ruler. And when you come to cut this, you've got quite a precise and accurately made piece of card. And as it turns out, that makes exactly one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you have seven hubs that you can have. You place this into your paper cutter, and if you think about it, it's very precise. This is at 90 degree angle to the line that's being cut. You cut those out. And you know for a fact that each and every one of these is roughly the same size and the same shape. And that comes uh, in very handy when it comes down to actually making the cars. To make the hole for the axle, you use an ordinary hole punch. And again, you'll see that when you lay these pieces of card one on top of each other, they're almost exactly the same size. So. My usual suggestion is to cut uh, two at once. If you look inside of this paper cutter, you've got the stand that holds it in place. If you take the pieces of card, place it inside the hole cutter so that it rests firmly against the back, in line with the place where the hole cutter is held in place under the base, you push it down, and there you've got two holes that are in exactly the same place. You cut out four of those, I'll just show you one more time. In total, you place it inside of the hole cutter, rest it against the back of there, put it in line, and if there isn't a line there, well you could draw a line which would make it easier for you to do, just press it down, and you've got two holes in exactly the same place. What you've got now are these hubs that will hold the axles and they're all exactly the same size or as near as you can possibly manage. You can see that there are seven there together but the hole is all in the same place. Quite often when you're attaching these it's always best to place the uh, axles so that it's as close to the front as possible to, s to spread the, the weight. The straws that you're going to use will fit inside of there and it's quite a snug fit. What you need to do is you need to make sure that you take a pencil and you push the pencil in through the hole and you can push it the full distance inside or if you have a crayon you can push it inside. The hole itself will still be in the same place but what you've got now is you've got less of a, a, a tight fit so that the axles can move freely inside of that hole. Whereas when you haven't done it, they can move, but it's not quite the same, and it does make a big difference to the way that the cars perform. We now have 
the, the basic body of the car. And what we need to do now is to attach some wheels to it. What well, we could, and I've seen this in many places where they've taken wheels such as these. These wheels themselves are cut out of the side of an ordinary cord cardboard box. And for that I used a, a hole cutter. Now these hole cutters, I would not recommend that the children use these. But I'm sure you could find someone, if you're not confident, do it yourself. It's, uh, it consists of a drill with a base and the actual cutter itself which slips inside and slots inside with a twist and it cuts a hole that size. Now it's actually designed to cut holes in wood but with this you can take it and you can have several layers of cardboard on top of each other and with an electric drill you can cut down and cut maybe six or seven um, cardboard wheels for the sake of recycling uh, and much less expensive than the ones you might buy from a provisions provider. So, so you, you, you take these wheels and you could actually stick them on the side and it would look like a car but it isn't a car because the wheels can't turn. I've shown you already how to make the, the card hubs and if these have been folded with hard folds you now have the basic structure of the car and you will attach these, these cardboard hubs, to the side of the car. And hopefully you've got a 90 degree angle at the top here. And you take them. And again, one of the easiest ways of doing this is to reverse the card. And make a, a general look at where it goes. For the glue. Place it on there. Remember to try and hold, make sure that the hole is at the front. Again, place it on there. And you do it like so. And you would line up the pieces of paper. It is, after all, just a, a paper car. You're not making something that's going to try and run the Le Mans. And here, you would do the same on the other side. And you'd wind up with something that looks like this, where you have the four hubs on there. And I would leave that to dry overnight to make sure that you have a strong structure. And now we're coming to look at the axles, which are going to be made out of straws. Now, unfortunately, it's quite difficult to buy straws that don't have some kind of um, kink in them to make them easier to use as drinking, uh, as a drinking straw. But I'll show you a way to make this into a rigid structure. What you would need to do is, you would need to cut off about an inch from the tip of the straw. And what you're going to do is, you cut the length of that piece that you've just cut off. And you squeeze it. And you place that inside of the straw and push it to the part where the straw used to bend. And with that piece inside, it stops the straw from bending. It becomes long enough to act, act as an axle. I'll just show you again. You take the straw, you cut off about an inch. You slice down the length of that piece of straw. You squeeze it so that it folds on top of itself. And you push that inside of the straw so that it stops the flexible part of the straw from bending. Okay. And now you've got an axle. So, with the base made, with the axles on, and enough space for the, um, for the axle to turn in, like so, you need to attach the wheels. I've tried all sorts of different ways of doing this, by putting elastic bands either side, or trying to use just PVA, and it doesn't really seem to work. There is no way around this. And this is something that I would suggest that, especially for the younger children, you would do this for them. You have your wheel with a hole that's been made by the, the hole cutter, and you're going to place it inside of there. And what you need to do is, with an electric glue gun, you just place a small drop of glue inside, making sure that you don't put too much excess on the inside of the wheel, because that would cause uh, friction. Place the straw inside, Turn it round inside of that, perhaps 
try and get it to be as centred as possible. You can't really send it off to the AA to try and have it uh, centred and the wheel tracking done. And you would do two of those. And when the structure is dry, you can place it in there, like so. And the other one in, like so. So that pokes through. And this is something that perhaps you would need to do for the children, especially if they're slightly younger. And all you'd be doing is attaching the two wheels to there. Small drop, right in the very centre, so there's not too much excess. Place it inside. Give it a little twist, try and straighten it up. And hopefully, hopefully with centrifugal force, it'll try and straighten it up. Like that. That's one on. Give it a bend. And take another wheel. Small drop. Now, believe it or not, it is important, as with most scientific experiments, to make sure that you only change uh, as few things as possible to show that the effect that you're looking for is caused by something. And with younger children, it's quite important to make sure that you give them the same coloured axle. Because you'd be surprised at how many children will turn around and say, well, mine doesn't go as fast as his because I've got a blue one and a red axle. You leave that to dry, the children can see that that goes. Set. And now you've got a fully functioning car that moves. With a car like this, it's all well and good. The children can push it, you can place it on slopes, you can, um, you can try it with different weights on top because this is quite a reasonable load-bearing weight.